communiqué de la 51e Assemblée annuelle du Conseil des gouverneurs de la Banque africaine de développement BAD et de la 42e Assemblée annuelle du Conseil des gouverneurs du Fonds africain de développement FAD, Lusaka, Zambie, 23-27 mai 2016. Nous, les gouverneurs représentant les membres de la Banque africaine de développement, la Banque, nous sommes réunis du 23 au 27 mai 2016 à Lusaka, Zambie, pour les assemblées annuelles de 2016, sous la présidence de M. Alexander Chikwanda, gouverneur pour la Zambie, ministre des Finances et président des conseils des gouverneurs. Nous nous félicitons vivement de la présence de Son Excellence M. Edgar Lungu, président de la Zambie, Son Excellence M. Idriss Déby Idno, président de la République du Tchad, et président de l'Union africaine, Son Excellence M. Paul Kagame, président de la République du Rwanda, Son Excellence M. Uhuru Kenyatta, président de la République du Kenya, Son Excellence Madame Inongue Wina, vice-présidente de la République de Zambie, Son Excellence Professeur Yemi Osimbajo, vice-président de la République fédérale du Nigeria, son Excellence M. Carlos Agostino de Rosario, Premier ministre de Mozambique. Son Excellence M. Kassim Majaliwa, Premier ministre de Tanzanie. Son Excellence Mme Sahar, ministre de la coopération internationale, représentante officielle de Son Excellence Abdel Fattah Sisi, président de la République arabe d'Égypte. Son Excellence Mme Marie-Thérèse Winfried Robinson, ancienne présidente de l'Irlande. Son Excellence M. Horst Kohler, ancien président de l'Allemagne. Son Excellence M. Ole Segun ancien président de la République fédérale du Nigeria. Son Excellence M. John Kufour, ancien président du Ghana. Son Excellence M. Kofi Annan, ancien secrétaire général des Nations Unies. Son Excellence M. Anthony Moutaye Marouki, commissaire aux affaires économiques, représentant de la présidente de la Commission de l'Union africaine, et son Excellence M. Carlos Lopez, secrétaire exécutif de la Commission économique des Nations Unies pour l'Afrique. Nous faisons notre, notre la dé déclaration de notre président et nous nous joignons à lui pour exprimer notre gratitude au président, au gouvernement et au peuple de la Zambie pour la tenue de ces assemblées annuelles et en particulier pour leur hospitalité et leur précieuse contribution qui ont permis à ces rencontres de connaître un succès retentissant. Nous nous associons également à la déclaration de notre président pour féliciter le président Adéchine pour son leadership et sa contribution au succès de ces assemblées ainsi que pour sa passion et sa vision qui ont permis les réalisations et les résultats enregistrés au cours de ces huit premiers mois à la tête de la Banque. Nous prenons note de la déclaration du président de la Zambie qui salue le groupe de la Banque pour le lancement de sa stratégie concernant les nouveaux pactes pour l'énergie en Afrique. Nous joignons notre voix à celle du Président pour recommander avec insistance la mise en œuvre rapide de la stratégie en vue de réaliser l'ambitieux objectif de l'accès universel à l'énergie sans laquelle nos pays membres régionaux ne peuvent pas soutenir la croissance, créer les sociétés inclusives et accélérer les progrès vers l'éradication de la pauvreté. Nous souscrivons aux déclarations faites lors du dialogue du président avec le gouverneur. Et nous entérinons la réponse du groupe de la banque visant à soutenir la croissance inclusive et la transition vers une croissance verte en intensifiant les investissements et la mise en œuvre de la stratégie décennale de la banque avec industrialize Africa, integrate Africa, and improve the quality of life for the people of Africa. We commend the progress made towards operationalizing the high fives, in particular the recent approval of the Bank Group strategy for the New Deal on Energy for Africa and that of Jobs for Youth in Africa. We encourage the Bank Group to intensify efforts to complete the other strategies for long-term agricultural transformation and industrialization in Africa. 
We ask for speedy implementation of these strategies in order to accelerate the achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals as well as the Agenda 2063. We applaud the recent institutional reforms initiated, including the adoption of a new business development and delivery model designed to improve institutional effectiveness, to grow the revenue base. Nous exhortons le groupe de la banque à s'efforcer de réaliser un meilleur rapport coût-efficacité dans ses activités. Nous reconnaissons le rôle central du secteur privé dans le développement de nos pays membres régionaux et encourageons le groupe de la banque à maintenir son appui au secteur par une augmentation de ses prêts ainsi que des réformes structurelles et réglementaires à même de promouvoir un environnement propice à l'entreprise. Nous exhortons le groupe de la banque à continuer de mettre l'accent sur l'investissement dans les infrastructures, en particulier l'énergie, les routes et l'eau, et dans, le, dans les trois fils du programme de financement et de développement, à faire preuve d'innovation en matière de mobilisation des financements privés. Nous notons que la mobilisation des ressources intérieures et la lutte contre les flux financiers illicites constituent des sources très importantes de financement du développement et préconisons un appui accru dans ces domaines. Nous invitons également le groupe de la banque à renforcer sa coopération avec les IFD régionales. Nous soulignons l'impérieuse nécessité de continuer à intégrer et à élargir les marchés régionaux. À cet égard, nous encourageons le groupe de la banque à collaborer avec les autres acteurs économiques et politiques régionaux pour l'élimination des barrières qui entravent les échanges et les investissements transfrontaliers. Nous notons que la question de l'emploi reste un défi de taille sur le continent. À cet égard, nous, félicitons, nous nous félicitons de l'initiative Emploi pour les jeunes du groupe de la banque qui vise à améliorer les conditions de vie des populations et à fournir le capital humain dont l'Afrique a besoin pour élever ses défis de développement. Nous encourageons le groupe de la banque à continuer de se pencher sur la fragilité sous toutes ses formes en Afrique et d'ouvrir la voie à une trajectoire de développement plus résiliente et inclusive development trajectory for the continent. We call on the bank to further promote and support private sector investment opportunities in countries in fragile and conflict situations. We also ask for strong commitment to achieve concrete measurable impact while learning lessons and working to better understand the drivers of conflict. We encourage the bank to address gender inequality, which slows human progress and hinders structural transformation in regional member countries. We welcome the launching of the affirmative finance facility for women in Africa to unlock lending to women in Africa. We recognize the threat posed by climate change to Africa's sustainable development. We are therefore pleased with the active role played by the bank group in the negotiations leading to the landmark climate change agreement reached at COP21 in Paris in December 2015. We look forward to the bank group's support in a similar fashion for COP22 in November this year in Marrakesh, Morocco. We note the bank group's heightened engagement with civil society organizations and ask that this be sustained. We welcome the unqualified opinion of the bank's external auditors on the financial statements ending 31st December 2015. We particularly welcome the good financial results despite the different global environments. Nous prenons note du rapport final sur la mise en œuvre de la feuille de route pour le retour des opérations de la Banque africaine de développement à son siège. Nous félicitons le groupe de la banque pour la gestion réussie du retour. À cet égard, nous exprimons notre gratitude au gouvernement de la Côte d'Ivoire et de la Tunisie pour le soutien qu'ils ont chacun apporté à la mise en œuvre efficace de la feuille de route. 
nous félicitons les administrateurs nouvellement élus et les assurons de notre soutien total. Nous remercions les administrateurs sortants pour les services rendus au groupe de la banque et leur souhaitons plein succès dans leurs futures entreprises. Les prochaines assemblées annuelles sont prévues en mai 2017 à Ahmedabad, en Inde, fait à Lusaka le 27 mai 2016, les gouverneurs. By acclamation, the community has been adopted. Thank you very much. Governor Fouchard, je vous remercie. And dear honorable governors and dear colleagues, as we come to the end of our meeting, and before I give the floor to the president of the bank group for closing remarks, I wish to recall that my mandate as some person of the Board of Governors and the mandate of the Bureau have come to an end. Allow me, therefore, to make brief closing remarks. Your Excellencies, Honorable Governors of the African Bureau Bank Group, Executive Directors of the African Development Bank Group, eminent persons here present, the diligent staff of the African Development Bank, ladies and gentlemen. Five days ago, we had the distinct honor to welcome you to our country for the first annual meetings of the Board of Governors of the African Development Bank and the 42nd annual meetings of the Board of Governors of the African Development Fund. As we come to the end of the annual meetings, let me thank you for what together we have been able to accomplish in this short period. We have brainstormed on various development goals designed to address the challenges confronting the African continent in the post-2016 era. Together, we discussed the bank's response to the challenge of supporting inclusive development and the transition to green growth by scaling up investments and implementation of the bank's 10-year strategy. The bank's focus on the high fives to light up and power Africa, to feed Africa, to industrialize Africa, to integrate Africa and improve the quality of life of the people of Africa is in the right direction. I urge the bank to diligently implement the strategies developed in line with the high fives. It is also, it's only, it's only in doing so that we can be assured that the sustainable development goals and the agenda 2063 for Africa will be achieved. Let me congratulate the newly elected executive directors of the bank group. You have the full support of the board of governors. To the outgoing directors, you have our best wishes as you embark on the next phase of your careers. We are hopeful that you will remain ambassadors of the African Development Bank group. You served with distinction to strengthen the bank and to ensure a sustainable upward trajectory for these institutions of development on our continent. To my colleague governors, in particular members of the Bureau, I wish to say thank you for your collaboration in the past 12 months. To you, Mr. President Adesina and your management team, I would like to, on behalf of the boards of governors, 
to assure you of our unflinching and unqualified support as you grapple with the difficult challenges. As I prepare to hand over the chairmanship of the Bureau of Governance to the Honorable Governor and colleague for India, I am fully convinced that with the renewed focus and the dedication we have witnessed, the African Development Bank Group can look forward to the future with justifiable optimism. Distinguished colleagues, in my capacity chairman of the boards of governors of the African Development Bank Group, I would like to express appreciation to you all for taking the time to participate in these very important annual meetings. I would also like, in my capacity as governor of the host nation Zambia, to express the deep gratitude of the government of the Republic and people of, the, of Zambia, as well as that of the National Organizing Committee, to you all for your diverse contributions towards making the annual meetings a success it appears to have been. I will now wish you a very safe journey back to your various destinations. Thank you. Je vous remercie. I will now proceed to give the floor to our very affable and versatile, resourceful president of the bank to deliver his closing remarks. Merci, President. Chairman of the Board of Governors, Honorable Governors, former presidents of the African Development Bank, especially President Babaka Ndiaye, who is still here with us, their colleagues, friends of Africa, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the senior management and staff of the African Development Bank, your bank, and from the bottom of my heart, I would like to thank you all for the success of the 2016 annual meetings. I wish to especially thank the Bureau of Governors for an excellent job that they have done in shepherding this particular annual meeting for the tremendous amount of work they have done since they began their mandate. I'm particularly grateful to you, the chairperson of the Board of Governors and our host governor for the warm hospitality extended to us and for the excellent facilities made available. Honorable Minister Chikwanda, this will be your last annual meetings with us. You have been a solid friend of the bank since 1974, when you became perhaps the youngest African Minister of Finance. Zambia joined the bank three years earlier in 1971. You have been with us for such a long time. Among your major achievements are the roles that you played as chairman, chairperson of the IMF World Bank when you argued for, on Africa's behalf, as well as the impactful role that you played at this bank, always with a great sense of humor and with good sense and if there's something I always admire about you, is that you walk like a duck. A duck looks very calm on the surface, but is constantly walking a lot at the bottom. That is Minister Chikwanda for you. You have managed, <laughs> you have managed the commodity crisis in Zambia, and you have had a have a, you've had a steady hand of the economy. You have been a remarkable chairman. You are the chairman at my election. You are chairman now at my first annual meeting. You will always be my chairman. Let us please all rise 
and salute him as he will be also retiring in two months. very much, sir, and may God bless you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, you have just heard the official communique of the 2016 annual meetings from my dear sister, the Minister of Finance, from Chad. The communique records our deep thanks to President Lungu and Minister Chikwanda, as well as three other presidents, two vice presidents, two prime ministers, four former heads of state, a former UN Secretary General, the AU Commissioner, and the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa's Executive Secretary General. It is an extraordinary litany and powerful testimony to the role of these annual meetings in bringing together Africa's brightest and best to chart its brightest and best future. In renewing my own deep thanks to our special guests, I also know that those 18 people named in the communique that you have just heard will want me to thank the unnamed people. Surely at least 1,800 of them who have done so much to make these annual meetings such a success. The governors of this bank, the executive directors of this bank, and the staff of this bank the Zambian National Organizing Committee and the Invent Management Consortium have worked such wonders under immense pressure. The men and women who have so cheerfully prepared the way for us, served us, guided us, and met and managed our every need. I salute them and the people that represent the people of Zambia. The African Development Bank and the African continent continues to stand alongside this great country. In our own languages, we stand and sing with you. And in the words of your, in the words of your national anthem. And our collective wish is that you soar with your emblematic eagle and reach ever greater heights. Thank you, Zambia. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been a wonderful week. I will treasure many memories, not least that of young Kevin Doe on Tuesday, the embodiment of hope, the passion, the talent, and the potential of this great continent. We share Kevin's vision and passion. They are clearly ours, and it is his generation, not ours, which will inherit the Africa we all want to see. Kevin is impatient for change, and Kevin is an agent of change. Everyone in this room is impatient for change, and everyone in this room is also an agent of change. And the agents of change have an agenda for change, and that agenda is called the high fives. You have had them often enough this week, and let me say them one more time, light up and power Africa, feed Africa, industrialize Africa, integrate Africa, and improve the quality of life of the people of Africa. And all this by 2025 in 10 years. On Wednesday, we had our board of governors, we asked them to vote and choose which for them is the highest of the high fives. The first high five to light up and power Africa got over 50% of the votes, while the other four all took some 10% each. When we discussed them after the voting, it was clear that yes, the energy deficiency is the crux of Africa's challenge, and that yes, an energy sufficiency will be the motto that will drive and to complete Africa's transformation. It was also clear to us all that the high fives are interlinked, and that the integration of Africa, the fourth of the high fives, cuts across all of them, along with the golden threads of development, the role of women, 
the role of young people, and the role of good governance. Let me briefly mention some of the other highlights of this week, a week that comprised some 20 or so official events, easily as many side events, and certainly 100 times as many meetings, which yielded useful announcements, signatures, and the more tacit but equally important building of political will and practical commitment to partnership. The theme of our annual meetings has been energy and climate change. The threats and also the opportunities. The vast reserves of untapped renewable energy, the vast reserves of untapped domestic resources, which can meet our every financial need. We had frank exchanges on the combination of principle and pragmatism that will allow for a blend of renewable and non-renewable energy, and we all agree that the imperative, whatever the energy we use, is growth and sustainable development. We agreed that Africa lacks the technology and the financing to adopt several of the renewable energies exclusively in the short term, but that we must make a lot of efforts to push in that direction. And I would like to say that the African Development Bank will encourage a lot on renewable energy, and I have had chance to say in various panels, we are even looking at, we consider to submit it to our board of directors to look at the idea of a differential pricing that will allow our countries to be able to move in this much needed direction. We found that we need also a holistic vision of the energy sector with strategic partnerships built all across the value chain. This includes sectoral reforms and policies which opens us up for different sources of private funding. The private sector in Africa, we said, has the capacity to make the change happen, but it will need the bank's support in providing equity, and it will need to focus as much on off-grid as on on-grid solutions. We agreed that global solidarity is needed, and we were clear climate finance has to become a reality. In sum, we need to scale up and move faster for the African energy transformation to take place. I would like to repeat a line from my dear brother, Carlos Lopez, the Executive Secretary of the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa, and I quote, there are 23 different initiatives on energy for Africa, all trying to leverage each other. I welcome the new deal on energy for Africa because it's high time that an institution from the continent takes the lead and puts some order into the system. End of quote. Ladies and gentlemen, the African Development Bank is that institution. We will work very closely with all of our partners so that we can create synergies needed to be able to deliver on what Africa needs and deliver it faster on the continent. This week, we discussed each of the high fives. We share the strategy on the new deal on energy for Africa, which was recently approved by our board. We debated at length about feeding, in particular also the issue of uh, nutrition, industrializing and integrating Africa, and we will follow through with full-blown strategies. We launched, with your support, the new Jobs for Youth in Africa strategy, a venture that will see us create 25 million jobs over 10 years and provide the skills for another 50 million. Ladies and gentlemen, we also discuss a bank fit for purpose to deliver on these high goals, a bank that is financially sound with a strong triple A credit rating, a bank that is rebooting with a new business de development and delivery model which will bring it even closer to its clients, raising performance, efficiency, and income and developmental impact on the ground. This is the bank, your bank, that made a record of loans of nearly $9 billion in 2015 and will continue to work hard to even do better. This, dear governors, ladies and gentlemen, is the trajectory of growth for a bank and for a continent. And this is the story of the week. 
23rd to 27th May 2016. And it is the story as we go back to our own countries, renewed with our collective challenge, in our collective challenge. How many times did we hear this week that rhetoric must become the reality and that our words must become our deeds? Our words are already our deeds. I am deeply proud of the work that this bank has done and the impact that it has had in hundreds of millions of lives. I was asked in a BBC television interview yesterday what I wanted most to achieve through our bank in five years and more. And I said without any hesitation that I wanted us to end the embarrassment of Africa's energy poverty and, the supply, and to supply the energy that will unleash the full potential of this continent. Please allow me, in coming to a close, to salute some of those who have journeyed with us and some who will do so. Let me thank our irrepressible dean of the board of directors, Shahid Khan. Mr. Shahid, please stand. <laughs> Mr. Khan and all of those around him have made an immeasurable contribution to the scaling up and focusing of the work of this bank. They have inspired us. They have also challenged us. Sometimes they cajoled us. But with also one thing in mind, core development of the bank, high fives, and the new business development model. We will always remember their amazing contributions to the future of this bank and indeed to the future of Africa. In thanking Shahid, I also want to thank these 10 people with him now who have completed their cycles of service. And as I mention you, please, I would like you to please stand. Let me thank Edi Asano. Please stand and remain standing until all your other, no, no, you have to remain standing, Edi. You have to remain standing on, until everybody else. Edi Muyos. Edi Kessela. Edi Mohammed. Edi Centuri. The tallest ED in the room, ED Tunenan. <laughs> ED Imsa. ED O'Neill. ED Ngam. And of course, our own irrepressible ED Petronella Wangala from Zambia, who helped us to organize these meetings. Thank you very much. We are most grateful to you. You may be seated. And with farewells come also welcomes. This week, I have had the privilege of introducing to you my colleagues, Franny Lottier, my new senior vice president, Alberi Kaku, my new vice president for human resources and corporate services. And let me join the chairperson in welcoming our new chair of our board of governors, Dinesh Sharma, the governor for India. I welcome your wisdom, your ideas. The bank belongs to its shareholders and to serve, with one thing in mind, to serve the people of Africa. This time next year, we will meet again in India and we warmly thank our Indian friends, partners indeed, as the Africa Indian Forum has again shown this week for their willingness to host us. So I say thank you in Bemba, and Tonga, and in Yanja, that is Nalto Tela, and Ndalumba, and Zikomo. And I say a very simple Namatse India in Indi. I leave you now 
honorable governors, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, for the final words of Kelvin Doe. Kelvin. I was raised up single-handedly by my mother. Her resilience and self-belief made it possible for me to be alive today. That is my aim, to promote innovation in Sierra Leone among young people. <laughs> Mr. President, I thank you for those outstanding, remarkable close remarks. They embody vision and the passion, passion accompanied, uh, passion with direction. We thank you. I thank you for the kind remarks about I, my country and uh, the kind remarks about me. I am totally humbled. Dear governors, as you are aware, the new Bureau of the Board of Governors will assume duty at the end of 2016 annual meetings. And therefore, in this very orderly and structured change of guard, invite members of the new Bureau, that's the, the Governor for India, the Governor for Maryland, the Governor of Morocco, to join us on this podium. I now have a very pleasant task to invite the chairperson of the Board of Governors, the Governor for India, to address us. Namaste, Africa. Dear Chairperson, the outgoing Chairperson, President of the African Development Bank, Honorable Governors, Executive Directors, Excellencies, Ladies and Gentlemen. At the outset, allow me to join the others in congratulating the FDB and the government of Zambia for organizing so successfully and so efficiently this annual meetings here in this beautiful city of Lusaka. On behalf of India, I would like to convey my sincere thanks for selecting Ahmedabad, India as the venue of the 2017 annual meetings of the bank. I'm delighted to inform that this meeting to be held in the state of Gujarat will be the first annual meeting of the bank in India since we became its member in 1983. It's indeed a matter of great honor for India to host this event. Gujarat is the birthplace of March Gandhi. Ahmedabad is where he started his first camp to initiate a non-violent freedom struggle under, against the colonial rule in 1915. This was soon after coming back from Africa. Mahatma Gandhi, as most of us here know, 
arrived in Africa at the age of 24 and stayed here till the age of 45. These 21 years, most of which he spent in South Africa, were the most crucial years in his life. It was during this time that he began to crystallize a unique philosophy of life, the philosophy of nonviolence. It is this philosophy that earned him the title of Mahatma, the great soul. I would also like to highlight that Prime Minister of India, Mr. Narendra Modi, is also from the state of Gujarat. He was the chief minister of the state for more than a decade before he became the Prime Minister of India. This makes the holding of this event in Gujarat all the more special. Once again, it's my pleasure to announce that the event will take place in the convention center named after the father of our nation. I would like to take this opportunity to extend a warm welcome to all of you here to visit Ahmedabad, the land of Mahatma Gandhi, and the land of centuries old Friends of Africa for the next annual meeting of FDB. May God bless you all. Thank you very much again. See you all next year. High fives. Dear governors, we will not exercise any more in order to demand on your time. But I think before we finally wind up, there will be a short film, I, I believe, uh, doubled based of Lusaka. Can we please have that short film? welcome you to this annual meeting of the African Development Bank Group. priorities for the bank. Uh, those priorities are basically to light up and power Africa. Second is to be able to um, feed Africa, to industrialize Africa, uh, to integrate Africa, and to improve the quality of life for the people of Africa. That's where the rubber meets the road in terms of development. Malnutrition remains a major barrier to development in many African nations, and I think the president of the African Development Bank made the case very, very clearly. Poor nutrition casts a long shadow over entire generations, denying children, communities, and nations from reaching their full potential. Nos deux fondations vont mettre de l'argent ensemble au niveau de la, de la BAD pour justement encourager les, la BAD à ajouter la composante de nutrition across le portefeuille de la BAD. Our shareholders, friends of Africa, are the ones that make this meeting an exciting one. Our expectations are that these meetings will generate resolutions which will help Africa.
I'm here basically to showcase some of my inventions and also to be on a panel discussion on creating um, jobs for young people. Ailleurs, on utilise le nucléaire, l'énergie aussi euh, à base de charbon. On dit que non, en Afrique ici, ça, c'est pas bon. Let us deliver together on the high fights all across Africa. Let us be on the right side of history. Please turn to the person next to you and give them a high five just like this. Give Africa a high five. the financing needs of Africa to develop its economies and meet the sustainable development goals are huge and far exceeds what the African Development Bank Group can provide from its own resources alone. And this is why we need development partners, we need the private sector, and we need the African countries themselves to come together for this. It is very important for me to be here. It has always been important for the women to be at the dialoguing table. Today I'm calling on everybody to commit to action, to commit to real targets, to commit to real numbers in anything that we say we are going to do with women. Then I'll be a happy person. You cannot move a society, you cannot move an institution without women. If indeed uh, they, you have to take a chance on Africa, it is this time, because it's not charity to invest in uh, power in Africa. Il y a seulement huit mois que vous avez pris euh, la tête de la banque et on sent la banque bouger. On a eu la chance d'engager euh, de, de, avec euh, la directrice euh, de la BAD euh, sur euh, le développement humain, avec euh, le président de la BAD, pour, une, pour, pour voir comment on pourrait apporter une, de ce genre de solution. Donc ça, je pense que c'est un exemple assez concret. Je pense que la révolution est sur ce côté et elle a commencé. Let's together rise up and light up and empower Africa and give ourselves the opportunity to develop as a continent with dignity. The Honorable Governors, delegates, as we come to the end of the annual meetings and as we depart for various destinations reinforced by the spirit of solidarity and fellowship that has been engendered by the meeting in Lusaka. I now declare the 2016 annual meetings of the African Development Bank closed. Thank you very much. <laughs>